The Tour de France has just finished in Paris, and as the riders take a well-earned rest, we're looking back at the bikes that won each stage of this year's race, along with all of the classification winners too. This is the definitive list, and once we get to the end, let us know which one you'd have if money was no object. Right, let's start by going through the 21 stages of this year's race. Yves Lampert beat the pure time trialist on a wet city centre course. His shiv was equipped with clincher tyres, according to the press release we got from Specialised, but those look awfully like a tubeless setup to us. Back-to-back -back wins in the opening stages of the race for Specialised. This time, it was the S-Works SL7 of Fabio Jakobsen. The rider that nearly died in a horror crash in Poland provided Netflix with the perfect story for their upcoming series. His bike features a full Shimano Dura-Ace Di2 12-speed group set and Rovell's Rapid CLX2 wheels. The man that put Jakobsen into the barriers in Poland also had a tough time since that crash, and his win was a return to the good books of many viewers and pundits. His giant Propel is the first of a few bikes that have won stages of this year, but aren't actually released yet. The Propel has been slimmed down since the old model, with the angular stem gone, thankfully. It was a good tour for Cervelo, and this isn't the final time that we'll see their bikes here. The S5 of Van Aert is the unreleased model. The tubes are all deeper, so Cervelo has probably been taking advantage of the UCI's relaxed frame design rules. A full Shimano Di2 group set, and Shimano wheels. No one had Simon Clark down to win over the cobbles, and if you claim that you did, we know you're telling porkies. The Factor Ostro Vam is Factor's aero racer, and it is a brilliant machine. The team's build features the older 11-speed Dura Ace Di2, black ink wheels, and Maxxis tyres. Pogaccia also has a bike that hasn't been released yet. The Slovenian's machine is a very Italian party, with a full Campagnolo Super Record EPS group set, Bora Ultra WTO wheels, a Data Bar Pro Logo saddle, and Pirelli tyres. Not wanting to be outdone by the Slovenian, Van Aert won again. The longest solo win of this year's race went to Bob Jungles. His BMC Team Machine SLR is a very sleek design, and the team uses a Campagnolo Super Record EPS group set and Bora Ultra WTO wheels. Tyres come from Pirelli, and Physique do the saddles. The best paint job in the peloton. No arguments about that one. That's all you really need to know about the Cannondale System 6 of EF, but they use a Shimano Dura Ace Di2 group set with FSA Powerbox power meters and Vision Metron wheels fitted with Vittoria Corsa tubeless tires. Unbelievably, Jonas Vingegaard almost put three minutes into Tadej Pogacar on the Col de Grandon aboard his Cervelo R5, setting the race for the yellow jersey alight. Cervelo unveiled the fourth iteration of its R5 road bike last year. The new frame is said to be 16% lighter than previously, with the bike as a whole slightly more aerodynamically efficient and more comfortable, particularly at the front end. Cervelo did admit that the previous model could feel harsh over longer distances. Now, Vingegaard's bike is built up with a Shimano Dura Ace Di2 group set and Shimano wheels. We think he's using tubular tyres for most stages. Pidcock became the first Ineos Grenadiers rider to win a stage at this year's Tour de France, and at the age of 22, the youngest ever to win on Alpe d'Huez. Ineos used the Pinarello Dogma F on every road stage. The bikes are equipped with Shimano Dura Ace Di2 group sets, and while Ineos have used non-sponsor correct wheels on mountain stages in previous years, uh, Shimano are back in favour with the team, with all the riders using the Dura Ace hoops. The bike with a hole in the seat tube finally got a win, with Pedersen sprinting from the remnants of a breakaway. The team's bikes use SRAM Red ETAP, along with Bontrager wheels, cockpit, and saddle. Another win for the unreleased Propel here, but this time under Michael Matthews. The bike was set up with a mid-depth Cadex wheel set and tubular Vittoria tyres. Van der Poel had gone home by this point, but Jasper Philipsen finally took his own stage win after many tears at last year's race. The bike is a full Shimano Dura Ace Affair, and the team uses Vittoria tubeless tyres. Another win for the Ostro and Israel Premier Tech, this time under Canadian Hugo Hula. Pogaccia had one last dig at Vingegaard. Well, if you can call attacking throughout the stage's main climbs, one dig. But Vingegaard wanted to have the last laugh. He went clear to win on the final climb of the race, 
alone in the yellow jersey. You really don't see that very often. And it is yet another stage for Jumbo Visma. This time, the French get a stage win with Christophe Laporte. He's done an incredible amount of work for his leader, so this one was very well earned. This is getting silly now, but it has been a dream tour for Cervelo, with Wout giving the brand a full house of wins for their road bike range. Wout's P5 features a huge 58 tooth outer chainring, a Vision one piece front end, and reserve wheels shod with tubeless Vittoria Corsa Speed tyres. Who needs Vanderpoel? Philipson was the only sprinter capable of doubling up on stage wins this year after easily taking the biggest prize available to the fast men. His Canyon Air Road was set up with Jura Ace C60 wheels to be as aero as possible. And that rounds out our stage rundown. Which has the best paint job? Let us know in the comments below. With the stages covered, our attention turns to the bikes of the classification winners. It is more than possible to find a rider that has won a competition within the Tour de France without actually winning a stage. Consistency is generally the key here, so don't be surprised to see a bike that you don't recognise. Kicking us off is the S5 of Wout van Aert, which won the Super Combativity Award. We've seen quite a lot of this bike, not just in our roundup, but in the race. He was seemingly in the break for the entire final week, though on big mountain days, he did switch to his R5 to save weight. Cycling is also a team sport, and the best team at this year's race was Ineos, beating Frances de Joux by over 30 minutes. They ride the Pinarello Dogma F, and while the team's GC leader, Geraint Thomas, has settled for third place, Young multidiscipline star Tom Pidcock became only second British winner on Alpe d'Huez. Their Dogma F is the one bike for all stages and has a full Shimano Dura-Ace 12-speed setup with the latest Dura-Ace wheels and tubeless tyres coming from Continental in the form of the GP5000 TR. Ineos were one of the last teams on rim brakes, so their move to disc really does spell the end for the humble rim brake. The King of the Mountains was one sort of by accident by Jonas Vingegaard on the Cervelo R5. It took the Dane to two stage wins, and the race for the general classification was enough for the Dane to collect the points required for a spotty jersey. Vingegaard's R5 features a full Shimano Dura-Ace Di2 build. Wheels are also from Shimano, and Jumbo Visma seem happy to flip between using tubeless and tubular tyres, with the latter featuring on Vingegaard's bike in the mountains. From the skinny boys to the fast lads, the green jersey this year was won by Wout van Aert aboard the Cervelo S5. On this bike, van Aert has picked up a couple of stage wins, but the most impressive thing is that he has dominated the points competition while also pacing race leader Jonas Vingegaard through the mountains. Is there anything that he can't do? His Cervelo S5, when set up for sprinting, sports a very interesting tyre choice. The Vittoria Corsa Speed is a time trial tyre, with some of the lowest rolling resistance figures around. Van Aert was obviously keen for the extra speed as he chose these tyres for the opening road stages. While he was aiming for yellow, Tadej Pogacar has been forced to settle for white as the best young rider after the Slovenian was convincingly beaten in the mountains by Vingegaard and a very strong Jumbo Visma team. His prototipo isn't even fully released yet and it has taken three stage wins and been right at the pointy end of some of the most exciting racing that we've ever seen. The main prize at the Tour de France is the famous yellow jersey, or as ITV's Ned Bolting once brilliantly called it, the yellow jumper. Vingegaard won this year's race, taking time when Pogacar cracked in the mountains and then resisting endless attacks from the Slovenian. We've already covered his build, but just check out the bike he'll be riding into Paris for the largely processional finish. And fittingly, taking the Lantern Rouge and finishing our roundup today is the Ridley Noah Fast belonging to Caleb Ewan. The Aussie sprinter hasn't had the best of races with mechanicals, crashes, and, well, pure bad luck, meaning that he walks away with no stage wins. His bike is built for speed, with a Dada Alenera front end, sprinter shifters on the drops, and tubeless Vittoria Corsa tyres. There's also a 4i power meter sitting on the crankset. That's quite a list of bikes. Now remember to tell us which one is your favourite down in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe before you go, and we will see you in the next one.